Hi people, it's Archivist here, and today I'm going to be talking some more about Super Smash Brothers Online and how I think it might be able to improve with a few little tweaks. Uh, I've been talking about Smash Brothers uh, on and off on this channel recently, and I actually do really like the game. In fact, I find it to be a fascinating example of two disparate halves of quality. You've got this single player or this local multiplayer if you choose uh, that is fantastic, well balanced, really quick, smooth and polished and there's plenty of content and then you go online and it becomes this really questionable, strangely dictatorial and just poorly connected system that doesn't really fit with the fidelity of the rest of the game. And so it's kind of created a situation for me where it's like grabbing a thorned rose where I know that if they got the multiplayer right for this, if they can fix it and get it into a good place, it will be probably my number one played online game on the Switch. And so before I go on a bit of a rant, I do think it's important to acknowledge what this game is doing incredibly well. And it's largely a result of Mr. Sakurai, who I have infinite respect for you know going way back to the original n64 version he's consistently made these smash games fantastic not only does he make something incredibly fun but he does have a mind for balance and he clearly has some passion that at times has made some questionable things happen like in brawl the tripping mechanic but it clearly shows that he has made something glorious here and something that's very unique and that very few games are able to mimic really i don't think we've ever seen anyone successfully mimic the style of smash brothers and do it anywhere close to the same quality you know we have seen similar stuff but i don't think anywhere near this however where i find major issue with the game is with the peer-to-peer -peer nature of how you connect to other players online even though admittedly this is a very common practice for fighting games because it makes sense to have their characters perfectly synchronized even if that comes at the cost of fluidity in the game there's also a little bit of input latency which you can really feel if you've come from playing a single player however i will admit that over time you do sort of compensate for this and i found that if i had a string of matches that were otherwise very strong in terms of connection I could play them very competitively because my brain would sort of adapt to pressing buttons sooner so that it would match up. So with some practice and with some experience with that input latency that is inherent to the online experience, no matter how good the connection is, uh, you can get used to it. There are times, admittedly quite rarely recently, where the input latency becomes insane and it's actually like a two second difference and that completely ruins it because, I mean, recoveries just won't work in that case. But most of the time there is a base input latency and I found that it is possible to sort of compensate for it. But where it gets very bad is, let's imagine you're playing with four people at once. If just one of those players has a bad connection, it causes the entire game to lag. Everyone has that same laggy experience and for me, especially if it's particularly poor and you get a lot of frame skipping and even the whole thing freezing and stopping, it I find it... First of all, obviously, it just ruins the fun of the experience because it's not fluid anymore. But it can seriously put you off your game because you're no longer working at the same momentum that uh, you were previously. So if I'm playing a character like Sonic, for example, I really need to get into a bit of a flow and it to be consistent for me to be able to open my attacks at just the right point that they will connect with my opponent. But if the game is constantly stopping and starting and freezing, then it just becomes impossible to do this consistently. And what I find in these matches that certain characters, just because they have a slightly more simpler attack method, have a distinct advantage. And there is nothing more frustrating than gaining loads of GSP, going way up the ranks, you've been winning game after game, and then you encounter a laggy match, and you're beaten largely because of this, and you just get knocked way, way, way down. And it just feels like there is no consistent way to be good at this if that's going to happen. Admittedly, it's not like only I am experiencing the lag. You know, my other opponent is also experiencing the lag as well. So it's not like there's an inherent unfair advantage there. But at the same time, I personally find it horribly off-putting. And if I wasn't penalised for doing it, I would be incredibly tempted to just quit out of games when 
even when you start up and your characters are jumping out, you can tell if the connection is poor because it starts doing lots of frame skipping. And I get incredibly tempted to just say, no, look, if you've got a poor connection, mate, I don't want to play with you. And really, that should be an indicator to people that they have a poor connection because everyone starts leaving. But instead, <laughs> Nintendo decided to massively penalise people for leaving mid-game. Now, I get this, it totally makes sense because you don't want people to rage quit, even though they still do, but you want to, to deter that, obviously, because otherwise people would just leave matches all the time if they felt they were losing or if they were frustrated, I get that. But a lot of people want to leave games because the connection is so poor, and that's what's frustrating them. And I appreciate that it would take a lot of you know, rule-based coding to get to a position where you can determine that someone has left because of a poor connection versus because of frustration. You'd have to look at timing of the leave, the uh, the level of the ping between players over time. So that isn't really a practical thing, but it's nevertheless a situation Nintendo have created for themselves where people are desperate to get out of these matches because they are just not fun anymore. And sometimes they can really drag on because if you're playing a four minute match or even more a, se a seven minute match and the game is constantly pausing that can potentially if it's bad enough become a 14 minute match you know or even longer if you have constant pauses that go on for longer than a second and i find situations like that incredible and the fact that you can actually be penalized if you want to get out of something like that it's uh, beyond words really so i think to myself how can this potentially be remedy how can they solve this because I feel like Nintendo have the ability to create a good online experience. I think Splatoon 2 is the best parallel that I am aware of, where I never had any connection issues with that. And that's a game that equally relies on characters being in exactly the same position, because you're obviously aiming and accuracy is key. So I don't feel like Smash Brothers requires anything additional that Splatoon 2 didn't. Uh, and some people have said, okay, what if they get dedicated servers? In a 1v1 situation, this probably wouldn't make a difference because if that other player has a poor connection to that dedicated server, there's still going to be a lack of synchronization. I think the frame skipping might go away, but it might be very unfair to the other player because now you've got a really strong connection. You can just keep beating them up, but they wouldn't even be able to respond. However, somewhere I think it would help would be in something like Smash Mode, where you've got four separate players all fighting each other. And at the moment, if just one player has a bad connection, then it means that every player in that match has a bad experience where there will be frame skipping and they all have lag. However, if you moved over to a system with dedicated servers, although that one player with the bad connection will still have a bad time and will still you know, probably have be at a massive disadvantage, to be honest. The other three players who maybe do have a better connection will be fine. So, okay, you haven't solved the situation for everyone, but at least people who may have invested in an Ethernet adapter to make their experience better, at least they are getting something superior. And the person who hasn't done that and are maybe playing in, you know, a McDonald's Wi-Fi or playing over 3G by using a hotspot, they're the ones who have the bad time, which... Again, obviously, we don't want anyone to have a bad time, but it's better for it to be isolated to one person within a four-player match rather than everyone. So dedicated servers wouldn't be too bad in this case, but there is obviously a massive potential infrastructure overhaul, and I do question whether that's possible. So the idea of dedicated servers, while I think would be an advantage, I don't think is necessarily going to happen. So mentioning it is almost futile feeling even though you could absolutely 100% make the argument that now we are paying for switch online these kind of bonuses are somewhat expected rather than trivial things like cloud data backups which you'd want to be just built in but whatever there you go uh, so another thing i was pondering in terms of improving the situation might be something like and this is, a again, a little bit harsh to people with poor connections, but I think it is necessary, is that whenever you enter the online mode, your stability of your connection is essentially checked to make sure that you do have a consistent, strong connection. And if it is insufficient, then you simply are not allowed to participate online and you're told to get a better connection. And this might be good because some people may not actually realise that their connection is the issue and therefore they never seek an ability to remedy it so they'll just keep playing online and keep ruining everyone else's time but if you said something like 
your connection is not sufficiently stable, you won't be able to play online because the gameplay will be so heavily affected for yourself and others. Because that's the key thing, it's ruining other people's experience needlessly. Uh, then you have to do something about it. And for example, to so a situation like me, if I was to take my Switch into portable mode and play in the garden, I'd still be able to play over Wi-Fi, but my router is obviously much further away from my garden, so the connection would be quite weak. And I'd effectively, for every single game I played, I would ruin it for everyone else. If it's some one other person, that's not great. If it's three other people, that's really quite poor. So having something where it says, sorry, you can't be in the garden, you have a very poor connection, please find a way of stabilizing it. I have to come inside and um, play much closer to my router or even use an ethernet adapter. Nintendo themselves have spoken about this and have said that the best way to play uh, Smash Brothers Online is with an ethernet connection. It's a tad misleading because, well, first of all, people do have very strong Wi-Fi connections and Ethernet connection isn't necessarily mandatory. And also, again, considering the peer-to-peer -peer nature, I could easily go out and get an Ethernet adapter for my Switch and plug it in. But the problem is, it doesn't matter if I've got that really strong connection if my opponent doesn't because they are bringing it down. So it makes sense to encourage people to get an, you know, go out and get an Ethernet connector, but only if you're ensuring that everyone playing has that strong connection, because otherwise you're going to get loads of people going out and buying these Ethernet adapters for their Switch, but then finding they've wasted their money because not everyone has done that, so they don't actually see a bonus because the connection chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So that's kind of my second thought is, should we be preventing connections from players completely not even allow them to participate until the latency issue is resolved another thing that can be a problem with not just peer-to-peer -peer, but even when you've got dedicated servers is the you know the literal distance geographically that you have to your opponent or your opponents so for me i live in the uk and if i play with someone else online and they live in london then it should be a really strong connection so long as their side is okay because geographically we're quite close. And if I play with someone in Europe, someone in Germany or in France, which is quite common for a lot of games, um, I, I mean, Battlefield, for example, you know, I tend to play on German servers because they are highly populated to have a strong connection. But if I play with someone in Australia, then it's going to be a horrible time because literally the other side of the world and just simply the geographical distance does actually have an effect so you know in that situation even if i've got an ethernet adapter really strong connection and my opponent has an ethernet adapter and a really strong connection um the distance itself could still create an issue so perhaps nintendo need to find a way to add a greater priority to matching players who are geographically close and i don't think this would be too much of a problem because you know, in in a game where you only need to find a maximum of three other opponents, as opposed to something like Fortnite, where you've got like 99 other opponents, then it shouldn't be an issue finding people. You know, that should be fine, especially as Smash Brothers is relatively popular. Not quite Fortnite popular, but it is popular, and we shouldn't have too many issues finding people. So that's another thing that where either you should have the option to select region preference so that you'll be matched against people closer to you even if it takes a bit longer or just have that as a blanket enforced rule in the networking code uh, so those are three things that i just as a layman can kind of suggest you know i'm no networking expert especially when it comes to online gaming but uh, i think i or anyone can tell that there's clearly something missing from the way that it's been set up for smash online and, you know, I do feel bad for the likes of, you know, Sakurai, who has slaved over the balancing of the core mechanics of this game and made something genuinely amazing, but then being so badly let down by the infrastructure teams, I guess, at Nintendo, who have just provided such a lackluster system, because blatantly that is what it is. You know, I feel like Nintendo are justified to charge people for online, because that's what their competitors do, but only if they create a comparable service. You know, even if they're not offering like free games every month like you might get from PlayStation Plus or Xbox Gold, um, at least create something stable. I mean, that is the bare minimum of charging someone is that you need to, for your top games, for your most popular games, the Smash Brothers is absolutely going to be one of them online. You have to provide a stellar service and really do all the networking finesse you can 
do to allow that. Because this is a game, you know, that I fundamentally really enjoy. I used to play Smash Brothers back in the day with Melee in particular, but then a bit of Brawl when I went into secondary school. Uh, skipped the Wii U version, but I was wondering, will I still enjoy Smash Brothers? And at its core, and in terms of the world of light mode and classic mode and all that, yeah, I really enjoy it. But that's why I would love Nintendo to get their act together in terms of sorting this connection out. I mean, I have seen some improvement, and indeed there are some guides online as to how you can take some action to improve it. For example, there's this ability to go into the internet settings on your Switch and change your MTU from the default 1400 to 1500, and when I did that, I certainly found that my general connection is improved. Uh, but again, if the default is 1400, then if I'm playing against someone with 1400, then I'm going to have a problem. So unless everyone does that, then it's not going to be great. So those have been some more thoughts from me on Smash Brothers Online. As always people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time.